In this video, we're going to be adding some transitions to our game where we can go from this map to this map. Wow, what an interesting map to come see. Very exciting. Oh, it's a bit boring, actually. I want to go back to the town. Let's walk down. Oh, there we go. Amazing. <laughs> cool. Let's take a look. In our previous video, we got the camera following our player around. The camera also confines to the bounds that we set. So right now the camera is bound to the confines of this town and the fence around it. That means when our player walks up and out into this green forest area, if there were trees, it would be a forest. We no longer see him in our game view, but you can see him walking away, leaving us behind. So right now we have T1. And T1 is just what I've called this town number one grid map place. Basically the name of the boundary for our town. We're going to add another boundary up above for our forest that I'm going to call F1 since it's our first forest. Then what we're going to do is add some waypoints, which will be colliders at the edge of our town that when we walk into, we'll switch our T1 confiner to then look at the F1 confiner and move our player up and into the next grid of our map. Then we're going to need to do the same thing so we can get back from F1 to T1. So a waypoint on the other side, pointing back down and completing the cycle. So cool. First, let's add the bounds for our F1 zone, the forest. So I'm going to select T1 and hold down Control D, which duplicates this object. I'm going to click at the top of the inspector and call this F1. And then if we click edit collider, you'll be able to see where this collider is showing. We don't want it in the same spot as T1. So I'm going to click the move tool, drag it up and into our forest area. I'll just do this by eye and then click edit collider. And yeah, it's too big. So these boundaries don't have to be the same size. I was just being lazy instead of making a new one. I'm going to set our confiner to show just the top of our fence here for our town. So we can see that there's an entrance here and this can be where we place our waypoint. And I'm gonna just drag these down. Like I said, this doesn't have to be perfect, but you can make it perfect if you want to. And it's okay that it overlaps a bit with our T1. They both show the fence there. So cool, now that that's set up, let's click on T1 and work on our town waypoint first. So right click and go create empty. And I'm gonna name this F1 underscore waypoint. Since this is the way into F1 from T1, I'm going to click add component and add a box collider 2D. I'm going to move this up so it's just at the top of our stairs here. Edit the box collider and make it fit in this little area. So just at the top of the stairs. We only need this to be a skinny little box because as soon as we touch it, we're going to be sent up and into our forest area. We're also going to want this to be is trigger. So you can tick is trigger on our box collider 2D. Cool, so now we're going to need to write a script to get our Cinemachine camera's bounding shape to change from T1 to F1 so we can see up above into the forest. And then also to move our player up a little bit so he's not still touching the waypoint. You'll see what I mean. <laughs> but cool, back on F1 waypoint, I'm going to go add a component, new script, and call this map transition. And double click on this to open it up. And we can remove start and update since we won't be using those, but we will need some variables. So first of all, let's add a serialized field since we want to be able to edit this in our inspector. We're going to want our polygon collider 2D of our map boundary. And this map boundary will be the one we're transitioning to. Then we'll want our Cinemachine confiner, which we'll call confiner. And this will have a red underline so you can just add using Cinemachine to the top. Then we're going to want a private void awake function, which is Unity's function that we'll call as soon as the script is loaded. And in here we'll go confiner equals find object of type. And since there'll only be one of these in our game, we can use this and search for our Cinemachine confiner. So this will grab that confiner script off of our Cinemachine. And then on our waypoint, when we walk into it, we'll fire on trigger into 2D. So let's call this function and say if our collision dot game object dot compare tag and types in brackets quote marks and search for player so if it equals to player which if you haven't already make sure in unity which i actually haven't done yet either <laughs> is that your tag on your player is set to be player so that this does work back in our script so if our collision game objects tag is player we want to set our confiner dot m underscore bounding shape 2d to equal our map boundary so that's the new one we passed in. And I've made a mistake already. We want a Cinemachine Confiner 2D. This is future talking. And uh, actually I'm saying here that the Cinemachine Confiner is meant to be a Cinemachine Confiner 2D, but it's not. The component that we use is meant to be a Cinemachine Confiner. So this is correct. Cinemachine Confiner is co correct. And this extension I added, we don't want Cinemachine Confiner 2D. We want to add the extension Cinemachine Confiner and set the confine mode to be confine 2D. Silly me. 
cool, we are going to add more to the script, but first I want to show you what it looks like so far. So again, player should have the player tag on it, and our F1 waypoint, we want to drag in F1 into our map boundary slot, and press play. Then when we walk up and hit our waypoint, it moves us up to our next place. But now let's add in the waypoint from the forest back down to our town. So if we press Ctrl D on this F1 waypoint and drag it under our F1, we'll rename this T1 waypoint and drag T1 into our map boundary. Don't get confused, don't get lost. <laughs> we got this, we got this. Then on our box collider, we're going to want to drag this up just between the fences. Cool, that looks good. And now when we press play, you're going to see our issue and why we need to add a bit more to our script. So we'll walk up. And then if we keep walking, we're going to walk back down to the town, which is broken. And now, oh, yeah, it's not looking too good. Okay, yeah, it's broken. So let's think about this. We've got our two waypoints. Our player walks up and into this one. And then what's happening is we're moving the camera, but we're not moving our player. So our player is still in this location. So then when he keeps walking, he walks into this waypoint, which transitions us back to the town and it causes a mess. <laughs> so basically what we want to do is when we walk into this location, we're just going to push our player up. It's not this far in our actual game, but in our drawing, it looks far. <laughs> but what we're going to do is teleport our player up a little bit. So he should be above the next waypoint that would transition him back down. So we'll stay up inside our new point. So if we go back to our map transition script, and I'm actually going to add a new enum, which I'm going to call direction. And in here, I'm going to go up, down, left, right. And with this direction, we're going to want another serialized field, which we can call direction. So we know which way the waypoint is facing so we can adjust our player's position in that direction. So let's write a new private void update player position. In the parameters, let's add a game object called player. And at the top, we're going to want a vector free, which we're going to use as our new position. So new pause. And to start with, we're going to initialize this to be our player's transform dot position. Now to know which way to move our player, we're going to use a switch case. So type switch and then in brackets, pass in our direction. Then we'll say if our case is of direction up, then add a colon and say our new position dot y is going to plus equals two. And then you type break after each one of your cases. So if we want to move up, which we will do, from our town to our forest. We're gonna push our player up just two units, which should be enough to just bypass our other waypoint. Now you'll probably be able to guess these ones, but our case for direction dot down is now gonna be new pause dot y minus equals two. So it pushes us down, don't forget your break. And then case for direction dot left is gonna be new pause, Ooh, new pause. <laughs> dot x this time since we're moving horizontally to be plus equals two and break and then case for direction dot right will be new pause dot x minus equals two and break cool now outside of our switch case you want to go player dot transform dot position equals our new position oh semicolon now up in our on trigger enter 2d under where we set our bounding shape we can call update player position and pass in our collision dot game object since we know this is our player and that's it it's all done very cool now let's go back to unity and on our f1 waypoint we are going from our town up to f1 which is above so we can keep our direction as up on our t1 waypoint we are in f1 and we're going down to the town so we're going to want to switch the direction in this drop down to down now when we press play we'll go up to our waypoint, get ready, we're about to touch it, and go into our forest. You see we're pushed up a bit, so we're right in there. You can edit this to be a little less, tweak it around, make it perfect for your game. But I don't really mind him being kind of pushed in. Let me get in there, get in the midst of it all. <laughs> okay. Um, now if we walk down to our town and hit our waypoint again, we get moved down into our town. Bling, blong, bling, blong, bling, blong. <laughs> like I said, you can work with this, make it as smooth as you want, as close to where the waypoints are as you can get. But yeah, I went a little safe and made it plus two. I could try plus one. Let me try it. So if you do want to change it, an easy way of doing this, I'm just going to add a float to be our additive pause. I'm going to set this to a default of two, which is what we have it at now. 
and replace this two down here with our additive pos, blah, blah, blah. So now when I save it, go back to our waypoints, we can actually make these different for each one for any reason you might want that. If I try this at one, let's see how this works. So now we're moving up one unit. Oh, no, I land exactly on the waypoint. Let's try 1.5. You need both of them to be 1.5. So 1.5. Oh, it's still messing up a little bit. <laughs> it's not happy with me. 1.75. Nah, see, two worked really well. It's as if I tested it or something. There you go, 1.75. So that's not as far up. You get pretty close. To make this even smaller, if you really wanted to, you can just make these really tight. You can use the pixels to kind of like check where the waypoints are. So if I make that teeny tiny, that's all you need. As soon as he bumps his head on that line, it will be triggered. And I can set this to be just below this teeny tiny line as well. It's like one pixel high now. So now if I try one and move, oh, oh, it doesn't like it. Look at him. It's because he's got a big fat head. Big fat frog head. Okay, 1.5. Now I'm just messing around, huh? There you go, 1.5. It's even tighter now. Blop, 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 blop. Cool. Now remember if you test this while you're playing, it's not going to save when you unplay. So you edit your details. Like if I make this 5 for an additive position, and then turn off my play mode, it goes back to 1.5. Same with any colliders you change. You're going to have to edit these outside of your play mode to get them to actually stay. Cool, well, now our waypoints are working. We've got our game set up now. Look at it, it's walking around. That could be the whole game, you've done it. Walking simulator, but that'd be a bit boring. So in the next video, we're gonna be adding our menu UI, which is gonna include tabs so we can switch between different menu content. And like always, I'm gonna put this whole package up on my Patreon. So if anything went wrong and you can't be bothered to watch the video again, you can grab it on there. But if not, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.